Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Financial News. I'm Ron Jankowski with Channel 4. My co-host is Paul Munico with Ameriprise. Today is June 6, 2023. Paul, can you give us an update as to what's taking place? And I will piggyback you on uh, all the latest information we got as of this morning from Ameriprise. Great. Yeah. Um, what I'm going to do this morning is give you kind of a, a financial results tally from um, Q1 and uh, we'll see how things stacked up. Believe it or not, they were solidly better than expected in Q1. Um, S&P 500 earnings per share were down 2.1% in the first quarter on sales growth of positive 4.1%. Though weak, the overall results were materially better than expected at the end of Q1 which uh, resided on March 31st. Analysts had forecasts of an EPS decline of 6.1% on sales growth of positive 2% for the period. The quarter was defined by a few notable influences. Slower global economic growth, a strong US dollar, and sharply higher interest rates. Inflation also remained a key consideration, boosting the top line results for some companies, but offering higher costs for nearly all. Given the operating environment, we believe it was encouraging that only three of 11 S&P 500 sectors experienced negative year over year sales growth. It's difficult if not impossible, to calculate the exact impact from these issues. However, FactSet previously <laughs> noted that companies with 50% of their sales in the U.S. reported year-over-year -year earnings per share growth of positive 2.7% on average for Q1, while companies with more than 50% of their sales outside of the U.S. have shown an average earnings per share decline of 10.2%. Now the percentage of companies reporting better than expected results was also slightly ahead of recent trends. Again, according to facts that 78% of reporting companies produced better than expected earnings versus a five year average of 77%, while 75% beat revenue expectations. The magnitude of the beats, however, was generally smaller. In aggregate, reported earnings were 6.5% better than expected versus a five-year average of positive 8.4%. While they were in line with the 10-year average, beats level of positive 6.4%. And. Uh as of this morning, from Ameriprise, U.S. stock futures are mostly flat following a rally on Friday with small caps leading the way as the Russell 2000 gained 3.5% on the day. Any? Friday was a real <coughs> strong day, if you remember. Um, yep. The markets were up pretty significantly yep. and um, well, well welcomed. And markets in Asia closed higher with Japan gaining 2% and closing above 32 k for the first time since July 1990, and Europe mostly higher at midday, and of course midday is right as we speak at the moment. Treasury yields are moving higher after last week's pullback, with the 10-year back over 3.75% and the two-year over 4.54%. Uh, Everything's searching for direction, you know. Yeah. Bitcoin futures are down one point. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Bitcoin futures are down 1.3%. Gold is down 0.7%. WTI crude is up 2% following news that Saudi Arabia plans to cut oil production by 1 million barrels a day. Guess I know what? what? You're going to say, yeah. Guess <laughs> what? Guess prices may be increasing. S&P 500. Uh, these are a year-to-date uh, index returns. S&P 500 is a plus five, 11%. Dow Jones is only a plus one percent. We're at losing a little ground. At least it's positive. He's so. still positive. We're losing a little ground there. And of course, with the market being as erratic as it has been, I can understand. And Nasdaq is a plus twenty-six percent. 
Good numbers. They're all <coughs> positive. We want to keep them to see if they can stay there. Okay. Thank you, Paul, for the update. Stay with us. We'll be right back with our show called Your Money with an interesting topic. We'll see you when we return. And we're back with your money. Thank you for staying with us. Paul Municle is going to share with us an interesting topic about managing your workplace retirement plan. And it covers a lot. Paul, I'll let you take it. Thanks, Ron. Um, you know, markets have been volatile, which makes managing these plans um, come into focus a bit more than normal. And um, you know, let's just dive right into the information. Investment markets, we know they're in a challenging period in which large swaths of the stock and bond market have lost value. Now, you may have noticed the impact of this on your own workplace retirement savings plans, such as your 401k or your 403b accounts. Now, while watching the value of your portfolio drop, it's never easy. And investors must understand that markets can be volatile over the short periods. Variable investments like stocks and bonds, they don't move in a straight line, and occasional cool downs are inevitable. It's also worth remembering that if you've been investing in your workplace retirement plan for some time, it's likely you've probably benefited from strong markets in the historic bull run that followed the 2008 recession. Today, here is some more perspective um, we're gonna give you to keep in mind. Number one, sticking with your plan. It isn't unusual to question your investment strategy when markets aren't working in your favor. Consider the two key reasons why you shouldn't be concerned by volatile, short-term marketplace performance in your retirement account. One, you are investing for the long term. Your concern is less about what the markets do today and tomorrow than how your investments perform between now and the time you retire. If you have a long time horizon before retirement and faith in the quality of your investment choices, you should be able to ride out the short term market swings. Two, you are investing regularly over time. So periods of market volatility can work in your favor. When investments drop in price, you're able to purchase more shares than you would have at a more elevated price. Assuming the investment recovers and grows over time, that can be beneficial to your ultimate investment returns. I mean, this is an average, uh, this is an advantage of making regular investments on a systematic basis. Now, for these reasons, it makes sense to be persistent with your regular payroll deductions that are directed into your retirement savings and let markets recover so your portfolio is in a position to bounce back. Now, changes to consider. You should be content to stand pat with your portfolio regardless of the market's performance. That's a question I get a lot. Um, in many cases, the answer is yes, but not all. However, there are several potential actions to consider in light of recent market performance. One, if you're closing in on retirement, which is maybe in about five years or less, it may make sense to scale back your level of risk in your portfolio mix, um, as long as it keeps you on track to keep reaching your goals. And that could mean shifting some assets into fixed income investments and taking some money out of your equity investments. And two, if you feel any of your investments have been less productive than they should be for an extended period, you may want to consider repositioning some assets. And three, it may be an opportune time to boost the amount of money you set aside for retirement. If you haven't regularly raised your contribution level, consider doing so now. For those age 50 and older, you can take advantage of catch-up contributions 
of up to $6,500 to your workplace retirement account. Uh, confirm numbers with your, your plan before um, changing though. And always talk to your advisor before taking any action. It's important that the investment strategy you pursue in your workplace plan be consistent with your overall financial goals. And now is a good time to sit down with your advisor to determine if you're saving enough for retirement and if the investments in your retirement account are working most effectively for you. Excellent, Paul. <clears throat> As we usually say, if you are in need of making some adjustments to your portfolio, uh, you really need and should talk to your financial advisor. And if you don't have one, can they talk to you? Absolutely. I mean, anyone that watches our shows, they, they know that pretty much after every show, we say you need to consult with your advisors. Yep. And uh, I always say, if you have one that you're working with, that's great. But if you're not working with someone or if you want a second opinion, you can give me a call and I'll do my best to help. And you can reach me at 708-226-3412. What's really important is that you take advantage of talking to your financial advisor, but you really need, finan you need professional financial guidance. That, that is the key. Uh, otherwise, you could be led astray by advertisements and so on. Financial advi advice, tax advice, um, estate planning advice, these are all fields where working with a professional um, can be beneficial to exactly. you. Exactly. Well, for Paul Municle with Ameriprise Financial, myself, Ron Jankowski with Channel 4 and Palos Heights, we wish you good investment day.